Good morning class, I am an economics teacher and today is 29th of June. We were in the fifth chapter that is primary sector. In the last video we saw about what are the government measures to improve the conditions of Indian agricultural system or what are the major steps taken by the government to improve the conditions of Indian farmers. Now today we are discussing about another milestone. Uh, achievement in the field of agriculture is the green revolution. Green revolution which actually changed the scenario of agricultural production in our country. Basically, this term was coined by or the philosophy or the concept was given by a uh, Mexican uh, economist uh, known as the Dr. Norman Berger. He is not an economist, I beg your pardon for it. He is not an economist. But uh, he was an agricultural scientist who gave a definition of or who gave the concept of green revolution. His name is Dr. Narnam Berlus. But <clears throat> in our country, this concept was coined by or this concept was emphasized by basically it is the M.S. Swaminathan. M.S. Swaminathan is known to be the father of uh, green revolution in India. In the mid 1950s, 60s, Basically, in the mid of 1960s, the uh, exact year is 1966, when with this term Green Revolution was brought into action, all the major steps were taken to improve the conditions of Indian farmers. Now, the background of this, or the history of Green Revolution, is how did it come, or what forced the country, different countries, to adopt the policies of Green Revolution. From the first Friday plan onwards, from 1950 onwards, 1951 onwards, the first Friday plan was uh, planned or fixed. From then onwards, till 12th Friday plan, we do not follow Friday plans now, it is no more applicable. Now on a calendar basis we deal. But hmm, uh, for understanding purpose, from 1951 onwards, wherever a plan was made, wherever a plan was planned, all the government, no matter which form of government was there, or which government ruled, they had the uh, plan or they had a um, better plan. They had planned everything for the development, for the upgradation of Indian farmers. But the sad part of it is that none of the government could really take advantage of or could really uh, give the benefits to the real needy farmer. There were some loopholes which were actually uh, corrected in the later part of the uh, year uh, and basically this concept or uh, this local uh, sphere uh, we came over with the invention of green revolution. So today our topic is what is green revolution? What are the features of green revolution and what contribution it will uh, debit to Indian farmers that will drastically change their lifestyle. The farmers who were uh, poor, who were uh, basically the needy one became rich and a helping hand for the government. And this basically was the state was taken in the uh, western part of UP and Punjab where uh, the area which is uh, highly uh, related for the growth of uh, wheat or uh, for the agriculture productions. So first when it was, when this concept came, it was tried over there, the Punjab and the western UP part. Later on when they succeeded, when their fertility improved, when their crops grew well, uh, over production was there, this concept was slowly and steadily was spread to whole of the country. Whole of the country took benefits of it. So first we see what is green revolution? What is green revolution? We are aware of the year now, 1966 is a uh, year and Dr. Norman is known to be the father of green revolution. But in India, MS Swaminathan M.S. Swaminathan is said to be the father of Green Revolution. He is the one who is known to be the father of Green Revolution. <coughs> so, first is meaning of Green Revolution. What is the exact meaning of Green Revolution? Since the mid-60s, that is 1966 is the year. So, mid-60s, the traditional agricultural practices are gradually being replaced by modern and new practices in India. Now, what are the traditional methods of cultivation. What are the traditional methods of agricultural production? 
I told you that we were not uh, very literate, we were not very much informative about the agriculture productions. So we never knew the modern technology or how to use them, what way to use them. So this actually kept us behind, this actually took us back to where we could not do or where we could not develop. So our farmers, basically, uh, farmers uh, did not have the sound knowledge of agriculture production. They actually used all the traditional methods for the production purpose. Now traditional methods here include all those which are obsolete today, which are used by our farmers. Means we are not dependent on machineries, we were human affecting. On an individual basis, whatever work could be done by us, we were working on that. But the other developed countries, they focused on, or they relied basically on modern technologies. They basically did the work faster than we uh, did, and they were able to sell, they were able to occupy the market, but we failed. Means our working conditions were not so epitic, were not so well fertile, that actually helped the farmer to grow his or her income scale, to upgrade his or her lifestyle. We were dependent on ox, we were dependent on bullocks, we were dependent on um, uh, uh, different methods of cultivation through human efforts, but they were actually working with the modern technology. They were developed countries, they were working with the modern technology. They used the tractor or all the modern, modern means of communication that could help in the production of agriculture surplus goods. So, <clears throat> that is why we were lacking. We were using the traditional methods, they were using the modern methods. We were far behind, we were far ahead. We were illiterate, they were literate. We did not have the sound knowledge of agriculture production, they had it. So that is why the more you learn, the more you earn. It's a simple call philosophy. This is what they have been following. They learn more, that is why they earn more. But in our case, we remain backward. <clears throat> the outcome of this kind of change is commonly known as Green Revolution. When you change yourself from traditional method to modern method, that means you have applied or you have focused on Green Revolution. The Green Revolution in India is the result of introducing new agricultural strategy. New agricultural strategy or new agricultural policy is basically termed as Green Revolution. All the new methods that we adopted after 1965 is termed as Green Revolution. The word Green Revolution implies two things. The first is well marked improvement in agriculture production in a short period of time is very important. When you produce a crop, when you grow a crop, the time period is very important. Time frame in which, uh, in uh, what amount of time or in what, what dedication of time to actually grow the crop. So with the acceptance of, with the acceptance of green revolution, our crops grew faster and faster. In a very less duration of time, we started growing more of crops. Means overproduction was there in very less span of time. At the same time, the requirement of the seeds, the requirement of the fertilizers, the requirement of the uh, equipment were very less. The water was required at very less amount. So all the basic uh, elements of production were handled in a very uh, safe manner. They were used in a very few uh, basis only, but production was much more than the crop, uh, than the other years. That means we had a small chunk of crop, uh, seeds money, but they gave, a, uh, they gave us a better yield in return. This, like for example, when we used 100 grams of seed, it gave a production of around 1 ton. Earlier it used to give around 10 to 15 kg or 20 kg, 50 kg, something was there. Means the difference was high, highly, high difference was there. A big difference could have been noted with the event of the revolution. When the green revolution came, it actually impacted the production of crop. We could grow more of crop in less of time. The second is the sustenance of higher level of agriculture production over a fairly long period of time. Now, another problem that our farmers face that they could not sustain the uh, grown crop for a long period of time. If it is grown now, that has to be pulled out. 
that has to be eaten up with a certain frame of uh, time, let's say one year, two year. But with that uh, event of green revolution, <coughs> with the event of green revolution, this problem was sorted out. What happened? We actually grew the crop and we could store it for a longer period of time. So that gave a ample hand or that gave a good hand or safer hand to our farmer. So they could have store and they could supply money and there was a need in the market or when the market was ready to pay higher price. So green revolution is basically green revolution that implies the large increase in agricultural production due to new agricultural strategy. When you adapt a new technology, when you adapt a new strategy and that gives more production in less of time and that is called a green revolution. Ms. Swaminathan is said to be the father of green revolution in India. <clears throat> Since the crops grew much more compared to what we used to grow earlier, this term was called as the seeds that we used were known to be as HYB seeds. HYB seeds. HYB. HYB seeds. So what is HYB seeds? It is high yielding variety seeds. High yielding variety seed. I told you, in the less amount of seeds, more productions can be done. So this is, this was the case that we use. Or this was the seed that we use. XYV seed, which actually required less of water, less of land to grow, less of uh, uh, basic elements to grow, but it gave more of production. So XYV seed or high yielding variety seeds were basically the development of green revolution. The green revolution, the seeds were termed as XYV seed or high yielding variety seeds. <clears throat> the program that is XYVP, that is high yielding variety program, it was a program which was actually launched by then government uh, in the year 1965. I told you it was launched in some basic parts of the country only, basically in the Punjab and the Western UP, which is uh, which has a very fertile land and which is suitable for the agricultural production. So it was basically first implemented into those parts. So that the result, if it, if it, if it was a better result, then, then, uh, then that could have been shared with the rest of the country. So government as a major uh, as a, uh, initiative only, it has started with the Punjab, Western Punjab, uh, Western part of Uttar Pradesh and Punjab. So this was a, this came under a program. That program name was HYVP, High Yielding Variety Program. Now what was the theme of that? Uh, this program, HYVP was introduced in the form of package program. It was a package program. Since high yielding variety, variety of seeds required the regular and educate irrigation facility the use of fertilizers, pesticides and insecticides. It required pesticides, insecticides and regular use of uh, fertilizers. There should be a sensitivity of fertilizer and regular uh, adequate irrigation facility should be there. If you have that, then only you can apply those. So, during the year 1965, 1965 the situation was not good in, uh, around the country. Means all the farmers were not so rich when compared to Punjab. Punjab farmers are basically uh, accepted as the richest farmer in the country. So they had some sort of technology. So basically, as a plan program only, the government took the initiative to start from Punjab only. So that the government could understand the response, how it is working. If the method is okay, then it will be implemented to, uh, throughout the country. The core of the program consisted of seeds developed by researchers in laboratory as against traditional farm seeds. It was not a traditional farm seed. A seed is not the general seed that we actually that we used to have. It is prepared under a laboratory by the scientists, by the specialists, by the agricultural experts. It is basically in less of the seeds, more production is done. So it required a minute study on this. As a result of all of this, a surprise 
increase mind you the word supply increase i told you less of things more production was done so it was basically a supply element now we see the percentage increase as a result of all this a supply increase in fourth year production was observed in the year 1967 68 1966 is the year which the MFS was implemented or started, and in the financial year 1967-68, we noted down the result of the response. What is the response? Nearly, nearly 25% increase compared to production in 1966-67. So as a result, the use of HYB seeds, we saw that there was a 25% increase. Means one fourth of the crop was more grown. Compared to less of seeds, less of seeds are used and more production is done. Uh, what production increase? Twenty-five percent. Or uh, one fourth of the total seed increase. So that was a huge uh, compliment for the government. That was a huge compliment for all the you know, people associated in the agricultural line. The economists therefore termed the rapid increase in production as green revolution. It was basically termed as green revolution. And it is called as Harit Kranti. Now we we'll see the features of Green Revolution. What are the features of Green Revolution? <clears throat> the first is focus on potential regions. Focus on potential regions. Now first we need to understand which are the potential regions. Potential regions are those regions which have the potential, which have the ability where the crops could grow. So the government basically focused on the potential regions. I told you it was the program was launched in the year 1956, and it was basically started in the western UP part, up Punjab part. So those parts were basically the potential regions one, which had the potential where the farmers were bit uh, acceptable or they were bit uh, understandable. They knew how to uh, match the concept or they knew how to upgrade themselves. That is why this program was basically launched from this area because the land was fertile, the land was accepted, and overproduction could have been a possibility when it was cut from such regions. Second is introduction of modern inputs. All the basic inputs were replaced. All the units, all the elements that we used uh, before prior to 1965 or 1966 were replaced. All the modern methods or all the modern technology were used. Modern inputs were used. Like modern inputs, say HYB seed was a modern input. High yielding variety seeds were used compared to what actual seed we used to use. So that those were replaced. <coughs> Second was use of chemical fertilizers. We started using chemical fertilizers. Some chemical fertilizers were used now to produce more crops in less of time. The third is proper irrigation facilities were initiated. Proper irrigation facilities say that <coughs> HYB seeds can only be used. HYB seeds can only be emphasized, can only be implemented at the ground level when there is uh, adequate amount of water in the. Uh, Near my area or other place. If there is availability of water, then only HYB seeds could function well. Means it required uh, water at a particular point of time. And if there was no water, the crop would not turn out. That is why water was an element which was required. And the last point is the application of pesticides. Application of pesticides. <coughs> I will just read the point. Since weeds also absorb a part of chemical fertilizers, they should be regularly uprooted. There are some weeds which actually capture the part of the crop, so they need to be uprooted. Again, to protect this plant from disease, the use of pesticide was emphasized. Means in order to protect the crop, some pesticides were used to keep away the insects, to keep away the uh, basic uh, harmful objects that actually destroy the crop or ruin the production. So basic elements of pesticides were well used. In short, green revolution was the outcome of the introduction of package program, which includes HYB seeds, fertilizers, irrigation facilities. 
toxicity and pesticide. Okay, these were the elements of production. These are the elements that the farmer has, the farmers have. Then only the green revolution could have become successful, or then only uh, more uh, crop production could be expected. Now there was a uh, third point is active role for the state. The state even became active. See, whenever the work is put on, it is a group cooperation which actually uh, helps with the success of the work. So active role for the state was very necessary. Now what was the uh, active role of the state? The state basically emphasized, the state basically focused on helping the farmers, helping the needy farmers who were not aware of the technology, how to use this, or what were the methods to follow. They were taught, they were given the lessons, how to improve the agriculture production. Their uh, soil conditions were uh, noted down. Uh, they were actually uh, taken to lab and uh, some graphical changes were done. And uh, the, the division of land was focused. Then the, all the um, uh, facilities of loans and uh, uh, credit were improved. That is, banking sector was improved. So whatever method that the government could cooperate, government cooperated. This is the initiative of the government only. So government took all the major steps to improve the condition of Indian agricultural farmers. All the basic elements of improvement were seen. That is why the outcome was in a positive direction. The result was much more than the expectation. It was a basic element of surprise for all. All the states all came together on a single platform and initiated the work. And as a result, throughout India, there was a plentiful Now, tomorrow we will see the effects of green revolution. What are the basic effects of green revolution? See, every point has two sides. Every point has two sides. Head and tail. You have seen the head today. Tomorrow we will see the tail. With what are the negative aspects of green revolution? Everything is there. Some good points are there, some bad points are there. So, today we saw the positive of it. That is that there was a production. Tomorrow we will see the negative side of it. Or the negative aspect of it. Thank you to us.